This is gonna sound stupid. One of the best ways to fight exhaustion is to not exhaust myself. Duh. But what I mean by that is exhaust myself. I don't have to move that much. I'll still be fine. Hey guys, welcome back. I got a fantastic one for you today. Uh, this is probably the second biggest lesson, second most helpful paradigm, thought, whatever, framework, for me at least, in BJJ. Um, this comes also off the heels off a question from one of our viewers. So thank you to Blue Steel UK 3742 uh, Thank you guys for, for leaving comments. That's one of my favorite parts about the channel is, is seeing those, answering those. Uh, I get a, a few that are you know, annoying, but whatever. That helps with engagement, right? Uh, so make sure that you, you like these videos, comment for me so that we can engage and I can uh, make sure I'm answering the stuff that you guys have questions about, at least from my experience. So disclaimer at the top here, okay? White belt. Like, I'm not, I'm not teaching technique. You're gonna hear me talk about technique. I'm not teaching it. I'm just trying to talk about my experience and how I have found the best way to adjust and do these things. Here's a question he's talking about. It's actually two parts. I'm really going to answer one this time. Um, but he's talking about how he, he's a heavyweight. He's uh, 37, which I'll be here in a couple weeks myself. And he's 338 now. He started about 354. Uh, so he, he's he's on our team. Um, he talks about how one of the biggest problems he's having only a month into to BJJ is that he's gassing out so quick. And, and I, I know that feeling. I remember my first rounds for a little while and just being spent after a, a three minute round. Uh, having to sit out, you know, every other round, um, that type of thing, it's hard. He's talking about how being gassed is the biggest issue and he's noticing that it's because he's usually holding his breath and trying to use his strength and overpower the person that he's rolling with. He's really been trying to relax and breathe but he falls back into holding his breath because it's really hard to relax when the guy's trying to jump all over me. Uh, so he says, I don't really know what to do when you get into certain positions. That's why I'm gonna talk about what I do, not necessarily teach technique. I'm gonna talk about that. He finds it fairly easy to use his strength to get side control even full mount, but then <laughs> he's too tired to do anything else. Um, that's an important part. So let's, let's talk about that. I answered his questions at length because I didn't want to I uh, have to wait in case I didn't do a video. And really, there's there's one thing that you have to learn, uh, and then it gives you a few things. The one thing that you have to learn is that you're going to be okay. What we're going to do today is we're going to work on um, me showing you places that you are going to be safe when you feel like you are not safe. And since you two are very new, this is going to be very helpful for you. You're gonna be okay. Um, you, you gotta believe that. Now, when I say you're gonna be okay, it still might end with you tapping, okay? It's not saying that this is, you'll never be subbed again, okay? But you'll be okay. Uh, calming down and knowing that you're gonna be okay lets you do these things that we're gonna talk about. That. And let me just come out the gate with it right now because you guys are getting ready to click off. Just protect yourself and you'll be okay. Well, I've heard that. They say that's what white belt is, learning how to protect. Listen, you can make it really hard for someone who wants to do jujitsu to you if you don't play jujitsu back. Now, that sounds crazy. Here's what I'm talking about. We're gonna look at three different positions. Uh, we did this in our class and I gotta, I gotta say this too. You're gonna see some video, there are Hundreds of opportunities for escapes. Hundreds of opportunities for sweeps, especially when they're on me. <laughs> hundreds of opportunity for sweeps. Hundreds of opportunities, maybe not hundreds, tens of opportunities for some subs from the bottom. Like, they're all over the place. That's not what this drill is for, okay? Please, I'm gonna say it about four times because people are gonna jump around. That's not what this drill is for. It's learning how to be safe when you're on the bottom. Now, understand today is that I'm actually pretty safe in a lot of these situations where I'm not winning. I can not have to overly extend and overly and put myself in a bad situation in order to get out of a position. I a lot of times can be the person who is on defense, but still be fine. Because what I find a lot of times 
is that people burn themselves out. We even had a term for it, cook. I wanna cook you, all right? Cooking means I'm gonna put some pressure on you, I'm gonna put you in a little bit of pain, and I'm gonna hang there and hold it and let you try to work out. You're gonna be burning yourself out trying to get out of this position. Now, the crazy part about this is if when you're on top or the other person's on top, especially lower belts, uh, but even, you know, I've, I've been with some higher belts doing this and, and they feel, you feel really impotent. You feel like you can't get anything going because they're not really playing with you. Now, yeah, I'm in mount um, and I could go to other positions and, and they, but they're, yeah, that's not what we're doing here. It's, it's, a, it's a drill, it's an exercise. But they feel really impotent. They can't really get anything going because they're, you're practicing taking away everything that they want. So what's this look like? First of all, if, if you're gonna breathe, that, that takes time. But one way that you can fast track that is by, by doing this. Let's take our first example of being uh, mounted. Someone's in mount on you. Usually a bad place to go. Um, I've not really had a whole lot of trouble with people in mount on me so far. Um, it, it, just moving really destabilizes them. They usually don't have one knee at all on the ground and if they do it makes them really unbalanced so a lot of people don't really like to even go to mount on me because uh, it's it's a very unstable position for them that being said it's still dangerous I then i'm kind of okay this is a horrible position don't get me wrong i don't want to be here but if i try really hard to make this guy get off of me using my arms or freaking out then i open myself up I put but when i'm there in mount what do they want well, they want to keep my hips pinned, potentially. They want to make sure my legs don't, you know, work into a regard. Uh, they want to keep me on my back and not let me get to a side. And obviously they want to move their knees up probably and isolate my arms or, or go after my head. So what do I need to do? This is not technique. This is just positions, good positioning. What he wants and what I want are completely opposite. So I just don't give him what he wants to move forward. And I can hang out here for a second. That means that I'm going to be comfortable here. It means I'm not going to extend my hands, extend my arms, do something silly with my legs and get myself in a bad position. It means I'm not gonna freak out. And if I'm not freaking out in my mind, then I'm not gonna freak out with my breathing. And if I'm not freaking out with my breathing, I'm gonna be able to breathe better. On top of the fact I'm gonna be able to breathe better because I got these in between him and me, right? So if I just hang out here and I allow him to do whatever he wants, I could just maintain this and keep this going. Find my safety and stay safe. I wanna keep my head on the mat. I know where they are. I don't need to look up and make it easier for them to scoop up my head. Keep my head on the mat. I need to keep my arms in, T-Rex arms, right? Frames, inside frames, inside control, all of those things. When they put their weight on me, I can frame, I can prayer hands and, and, and frame off that pressure so it doesn't uh, weigh as, as much on my diaphragm. Uh, when they're up top on me, I'm my hips are fine. I mean, yeah, I need to move if I'm gonna escape, but that's not what we're doing here, I'm safe. I can breathe. When they start to go after my arms, if I keep them tight and have any modicum of strength whatsoever, you don't have to have big man strength. You just keep your hands together and they can't pry them out. Now, on bigger guys, I have a big space right here. They're gonna try to walk up under, but if they can't hook it right, then they're not gonna be able to walk it. They have to be able to walk it out. And once they do that, you can still pummel back in. So if you were to go three minutes with a guy on top of you and you're mounted, not trying to escape, not trying to sweep, not trying to counter with a sub, not trying to change positions. And just let them work on you. Put some athletic tape over your mouth and just breathe through your nose for three minutes. I almost guarantee you, you won't get subbed. Almost. There's some black magic out there. I can't speak for that. You might even get subbed once, maybe twice, but just think about how safe you are there. So I, I, I want you to see how impotent they are when they're on top. Now, these are happen to be some fresh white belts. This is their first time even mounting on me. But trust me, I, I, I did this in competition. I did this when I was stuck in side control. I was safe there and nothing happened until I moved out of side control. So it works. 
And think about another position. Let's think about side control. When you're in bottom side control, there's a lot of space going on there. And there's a, I need to clarify, most of this is no gi oriented. If you are wearing a gi, you always have to protect your collar, um, even when, when you're a mount, all that stuff. But a lot of the principles still apply. Side control is, has so many options. Right, but what do they want? They want to cross face you with their shoulder of justice. They want to keep your hip against their knee. They want to keep your not danger side arm up shelved on their other knee by your head. Uh, and they're gonna work on your danger side arm with their two hands. Just take parts of those things away, right? If you can get your elbow back down to the mat and iron squirrel their hip, don't get wrist locked, iron squirrel their hip. If you can work your knee in, all the better to regard, but you don't even have to do that. You just have to practice keeping them from going to mount. In this drill, they won't, they'll stay in side control. But good habits, keep your knee attached to their hip so they don't go to mount. Keep your head on the mat. You don't need to lift your head. You know where they are. And then danger side arm. Tuck it inside. Keep it up on their, on their chin as, as possible. Protect it. Just work that. Work inside control. Work breathing. Work being okay. I was stuck like that in my competition in my second match. I was used to people being higher on me. He was lower on my waist. But I kept my danger side arm safe. There was nothing. He, he had nothing on me. And I could have ridden out the whole round that way uh, until he moved and he wouldn't move. So I moved. So try that one. So listen guys, it's, it's really simple. Uh, just staying alive. It can be really frustrating uh, when someone is not doing jujitsu with you, which is an interesting thing to explore when it comes to like self-defense and stuff like that. When it comes to protecting yourself and breathing, finding this center where you know that you're safe and you then have some room to process, particularly when it's still very if then for us and, and very kind of stilted in the way that we think. We're not as intuitive about our, our moves and our techniques yet. So having space to be able to breathe and then to be able to think about where you're at and just systematically taking away what they want is gonna put you light years ahead and being able to develop your cardio, uh, being able to make sure that you're, you're safe in all of these different positions and it's going to make you better when you're on top and attacking because you're going to know those things that you want those things that you practice taking away on the bottom you want to then take when you're on top you're going to make sure that you keep that cross space you're going to make sure that you keep control over hips and, and, and you're going to make sure that you keep that arm shelved so that they can't block your hip you're going to look for those things as you attack and you're going to put them in the freak out zone so all you have to do is work through this. Now, how do you go about doing this? Um, talk to your coach about this concept first uh, and, and just get their thoughts on it. This is the way that you know I've learned. And, and I, this been, it's really the second best thing that I've learned other than the around the clock drill. This is the best principle that I've learned uh, for getting through what I have so far. Uh, talk to them, get their advice on it, but then you know, do an open mat and just have a partner say, hey man, uh, for a couple of rounds in different positions, can you stay in that position and just try to work stuff on me? And I'm, I'm just going to try to defend. And, and you might get somewhere, you might not get somewhere on me. You might tap me, you might not. I don't know. I just need to work out in my head and body what this feels like. Then do that. Do do several different positions. Alternate so that they can feel it too. You guys can talk about, you know, what tendencies you felt. Then in your regular role, since you don't have anything to prove as a white belt, and <laughs> you're not going to win practice, uh, take some of your roles and they're going to change position on you because it's a regular role. Uh, once you, you know, are starting to develop this, or maybe ask them if you can do some positional sparring where they stay in one position. Once you get that idea of a couple of these positions, do it in a live role. Uh, start on bottom, slap bump. And then just go purely defensive. Don't sweep them. Don't uh, don't try to escape unless you get you know real deep into the barrel. But I mean all the way up to where they're in your back, and you can start taking away the things that they want. Like maybe they've got both hooks in. Maybe they've got a seat belt, but they're not choking you yet. Can you be comfortable there as you defend yourself? So I mean, don't escape. Don't sweep. Ride it out and just practice being safe. Huge, huge, huge dividends both ways because you'll pick up things for when you're attacking too 
If you know that when you're defending, you really start to freak out when you feel that arm come under your chin, then there's a good chance that your opponents feel that way too. So do it at the appropriate time. Do it early, do it late, do whatever you think is the best opening for your opponent. You start to feel those things and they translate. So guys, I can't recommend enough this idea. Uh, we picked it up from my coach. It's his idea 100%. I'm just defending. It really, really works. Hey guys, I appreciate you. Thank you so much for watching these videos. Thank you for checking in. Again, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. One other thing that would be really helpful is that like on Facebook groups and stuff, I don't really share these links because I don't want to get kicked out of groups um, and it would be considered self-promotion. But there's a lot of questions on like BJJ after 40 and BJJ fanatics about larger people. There's at least one a week and I usually try to comment and answer in much the same way I do here. If you guys can see those things and you can share this channel to help bring more people into this big heavyweight community, that would be awesome. I'd really appreciate that. Lesson is, today's lesson is, I'm safe. I'm safe. That's what I want first. I find the escape, but I want to be safe so that I can breathe. So 30 seconds later, he still hasn't found it. He still hasn't found a uh, submission. And I'm like, please brother, take this one. Here's one for you. No, you don't want to get there. You will get there. You will get there. We try not to get there. This is how we don't get there. Whew, breathe. A little movements. I, wasn't, I didn't flex once. Just, oh, I need this elbow back. That's, that's what I need. I need this elbow back. Right? You need to get a little bit of pressure. I'm gonna get you between me and you so you can't put all that pressure on me. Keep this on your, on your chin. I'm not trying to push your chin up, but I'm not gonna let you put your head down. Putting that head down is where that pressure really comes in. You can't put pressure on somebody with your head up like this. You can't really dig in. Right? 